we're starting something new and exciting here. Uh, it is the first in a series of adventures into spatial audio. We're going to cover uh, some basics during this episode, and then we're going to just jump right into it and start integrating spatial audio in the Wise Adventure game. Um, yeah. Mads, tell us about the Wise Adventure game for folks who maybe haven't heard of it before. Uh, so, yeah, the Wise Adventure game is a Unity sample that we've had uh, for a couple of years now. It's uh, it's o uh, open source and uh, just free to use. You can get it from our launcher. Let's uh, take a look in our launcher. Are you looking at my screen now? Yeah. So let's go to the Wise Adventure game in the samples in the top here, and then Wise Adventure game. And this is where you just download the source, but it's all, not only just a source with the uh, Wise project, but it's also the Unity project with all the models and all the scripts and all the systems that you can dive into and, and look up for the hooks for going into Wise. So it's just as much a, an example of how you can apply different methods, but also getting you all the way to actually doing this yourself in Unity. So you can be that person who not only it takes the sounds, but also puts them in the game in some context. And for that um, for that uh, story, we have a course on our website. If you go to learn and then learn WISE, uh, there's two courses, the WISE 251 and the WISE 301 which is uh, utilizing this WISE Adventure game, especially this WISE 301 certification. An important thing to know about the certifications, they're all free. You can dig into yeah. them right now. Uh, you don't have to pay to take the certification to step through the process and access those resources. Uh, they're yeah. all free for you to, to use. Uh, the only part that costs money is when you do uh, complete the certification, you can choose to then um, pay to be certified. certified. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So so in many ways, you can all these resources of learning is there for you to just grasp, right? And if you choose to be like have a certification itself, you can just go in and uh, order that as well. Uh, and I think uh, maybe there's still some uh, discount on that from the WISE uh, worldwide event. But uh, But yeah, so, but most of what we'll be looking at today is uh, the Wise Adventure game, like an extension of the Wise 301 course, because in this Wise 301 course, uh, we have, we will cover a lot of things like, like fundamental things like using AK events to post, uh, post events. So we also have a, a sound bank management, how you load sound banks and so on. And we also for like reverb zones uh, for kind of emulating the speed acoustics in itself, we also have the AK environments where you subscribe to a certain aux bus. Uh, and that is what we'll be looking into today uh, and replace, because that is the final th like part of the WISE units integration that is not in the WISE units integration course, but that will be imported now with all the community. Yep. And so that's part of this as well is in taking you along for this ride as we integrate spatial audio into the Wise Adventure game, we want to hear from you in the chat. You know, help us uh, clarify anything that we might be too deep on. Are there words that we're using that you don't understand? Please call us out in the chat. Let us know how we can, you know, bring spatial audio to you in a way that that's easy to understand and that really helps you. Um, yeah just feel the the potential for uh, what we're trying to do with audio interactively in games. So let us know. Yeah. And afterwards, we will, when we are done with all these sessions, we will release a new version of the Wise Adventure game with spatial audio inside. Uh, if you just take a peek in there, uh, you can see here there's already a lot of things that has been implemented in the version we're using right now. And if I just remove these scenes here and press play. There's also some tools you will get when you have the Wise Adventure game and play it on in there. But the, the, the point of this is, you can see here, we go to the audio menu. And if you go to, we have a spatial audio button there with some different options. 
But the the point of all this is that if you have any comments on how you want to implement things or get some good ideas for how to do this, sure, post them in the chat and we will actually get inspired to maybe put this in the game and uh, that we launch later on. So you can put your mark on the Wise Adventure game. Awesome. Uh, so like Mad said, engage with the, us in the chat. Uh, we're actively trying to build this uh, with the community here and looking forward to your help to make the wise adventure game spatial in the best possible way for the community. So exactly. with that, we said like the word spatial audio, I don't know, 20 times, 150 <laughs> times. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's talk a little bit about the concepts that we'll be dealing with uh, throughout the integration process, and yeah, do you want to show what, uh, what we have in the wise we're Adventure using game. in like the yeah. normal wise adventure game without spatial audio? Yeah. So uh, for now, for right now, we have in the wise adventure game we have a lot of zones where you can see that these different triggers here mark a different region, and for the same for the dungeon, dungeon here. Uh, let's take that in as well here and go to these wise environments. We have a lot of different triggers as well here. And that is using uh, the, the method from the wise three on course, the AK environments. But that is really just subscribing to certain aux bus when you get into these. And so it's, it's applying an effect uh, to every sounds in there, but it's not as complicated as using the AK rooms and so on. Um, yeah, and these are the components that we're going to replace with AK environments. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, replace with rooms. Um, I have a presentation yes. about um, rooms and portals. Let me share it here. I think do it now. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Um, yeah. Awesome. Wait, I'm going to put the chat here in case something happens. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, special audio. So today what we're going to uh, show is some propagation with booms and portals. <laughs> that was really loud. <laughs> Sorry. I, I forgot the microphone was just above it. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So we're going to concentrate on rooms and portals. And like uh, we just showed you, all the AK environments will be uh, replaced with rooms and portals, why? I'll just, um, okay, sorry. Um, so why? Because, well, rooms, they act a little bit like AK environments. They do have some um, a reverb that you can apply to, but at the same time, it can propagate the sound in different rooms with, those, with the portals that you can add and connect to rooms. Um, it can uh, propagate the direct sound, but it can also propagate the reverb of, uh, of the sounds in the different rooms. Um, so just a little like introduction here, the rooms, you get to send them um, to Spatial Audio and the only thing that is needed is to know if a game object is inside or, out, or inside that room or inside no rooms. Um, and so it doesn't need to have like a special shape. It's just to know if it's if the game object is in or not. And uh, the portals though has to be like a box shaped thing that you put in between two rooms to connect them. Um, so a little bit of theory here. Uh, we're we're using two things uh, when propagating sound. Um, oh, I wrote direct path here, but it's not just the direct path here. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, so we're using transmission of the sound. So that's all the sound that's going to go through uh, the walls of the rooms uh, when there's no portals or if uh, the portal is like more uh, to the side or something. Um, and in this case, we're going to filter our, our sound with occlusion. And when there are portals, uh, the sound is also going to um, bend. And uh, we're going to use obstruction in that case to to model diffraction. Um, yeah, so like I said, transmission is gonna use occlusion and um, the, there's a parameter on your room that you can set uh, the occlusion value. 
And this can, is going to be sent to uh, Wise, and it's going to use your occlusion um, curves uh, in your project. Uh, and at the same time, if there is a portal, you're also going to get a, a diffracted direct path here uh, with um, a, uh, an up and the, obst uh, the obstruction is going to be like uh, measured with the angle at which it's it's bending. So if you have like a zero degree, it's going to be zero percent obstruction. And if you get like 180 degrees, it's going to be a hundred percent obstruction. And there's also going to have uh, to spatial audio is also going to add a uh, virtual um, source uh, with like a corresponding um, distance for a uh, distance attenuation. Um, so positioning and distance saturation. So you're going to hear the sound from here, and the sound that is going to com come from this one is going to have a, a occlusion. So I love the idea that it's taking all of the sound from that room and, as you said, bending it through the portal. Uh, a question from the chat, does occlusion allow yeah. frequencies to be treated differently? So... That's all in the authoring. You can add a different LPF, HPF curve for your occlusion That's value. Low pass filter and high pass filter. Yes. Uh, and then the obstruction can be set differently with different curves. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, everything's uh, set up by the user. Yeah, so in the wise curve editor, you have uh, properties for spatial audio that you can change uh, in order. Yeah, to we can. We could show it uh, when we go back to meds. Cool. Um, Thanks for the question. Great. That's it. No questions. OK. So that's for a direct path. Um, let's jump for uh, reverb now, because we also have reverb, reverb in these rooms, and we also want those the reverb to propagate to other rooms. So before, with the AK environment, when we added a reverb, it would look like this. Um, we would send uh, our sound to a reverb, room verb, for example, here, uh, effect, and it would be included in the listener uh, game object. But now with rooms, what we have is we have a different game object with just for the room, and that lets us have like a different um, filtering attenuation going on before it reaches the listener. Is there any questions on this? You see things pop up. Yeah, so a couple questions coming in. Um, you know, we'll talk about more about where those curves for filtering uh, for reflect are authored when we go hands on in a little bit. Um, the question is Is occlusion the same for all walls of the room, or can we assign different yeah. values to different walls of the room? No, it's, it's the same for all walls of the room, yeah. But. Um, each room has their uh, different wall occlusion. So in my example I had uh, here, uh, it's actually uh, going to get the maximum value between room one's uh, wall occlusion and room two's wall occlusion and pick the maximum one uh, here. So you could have some different uh, behaviors like that, but yes. Um, okay. So, yeah, so everything that is emitting, let's say, in room one uh, is going to feed to uh, a reverb uh, effect, for example. Everything's going to be added and positioned at our portal here and then transmitted to uh, the listener with uh, a, like, a distance attenuation and filtering uh, with the portal. Um, so you can see it here in like the profiler graph view. Uh, every like sound is all sending to the same room game object with a uh, reverb effect, and then everything is sent after some filtering maybe uh, to the listener. <laughs> reverb is clear, no questions. Um, One more question so, though on the idea of setting obstruction and occlusion values depending on wall material. Hey Brian, good to see you. Uh, we can set those based on the different material types, though, using uh, the... Um, the material 
type. No, that's that's uh, the acoustic ah, texture, and that's only when the sound is bouncing off, and that's not when it's Great. curving or going through. Great. So going through is only wall occlusion parameter for rooms. Um, and that's like zero to one hundred percent kind of thing. The what? The uh, uh, obstruction value of a, a room. Obstruction value. Yep. Yeah. So the if I go back, just to make sure. Um, yeah. Depending on the angle, uh, if it's zero degrees, it's going to be zero percent in the obstruction curve, and if it's hundred and eighty degrees, it's going to be hundred percent obstruction in the curve. I mean, depends on your curve. Sure. Um, yeah. So I think to answer your question directly, Brian, the acoustic material will be more for um, managing the reflections side of spatial audio, which we'll talk more about. Um, whereas Another. this obstruction value is, is a zero to a hundred percent set on the room volume itself. Um, the obstruction is about the bending of the path. Ah, great. The occlusion is a, is, is a parameter on the room and the obstruction is, a, is the bending of the direct path, at the portal, uh, intersection. Perfect. Um, cool. Um, so. Another thing that rooms and portals can do is uh, if you hear a sound in a different room having their own reverb, you're going to hear it from the portal, but this sound can also feed in the, to the reverb that you're, the listener is in. So for example, here the listener is in the outside room and there is an emitter emitting in the room called room. So you're gonna hear like the this uh, room uh, reverb coming directly, and you're also uh, this is also going to send to a uh, reverb of the room you are inside. Not, uh, that is, uh, and uh, yeah, so you're hearing two um, two uh, different reverbs. So that's cool. You can see the difference of those. I don't know if we'll see it today. Um, okay. Um, there's two more things. So this one is uh, when you transition from uh, one room to the other, uh, you're getting, uh, there's gonna be a spread measured uh, with the opening of your portal. So we get like, uh, like the opening and we tra translate that into a percentage of spread. So if you check this image, uh, at this point, you're like having 5% of spread on, um, uh, what you're hearing from the inside and the more you go in uh, the room uh, the spread opens up and you're hearing it from everywhere um, do we have like a little example here where we have a listener entering a room uh, this is the integration demo and the emitter is inside the room so when the listener is outside let's wait let's start again you can if we hear it here it's from the top you can start to see that it's in enveloping the listener completely the more it enters the room and uh, last thing if uh, there is a game object that is emitting that is passing through this um, this portal here uh, we do a crossfade for oh i forgot to add the uh, our curves anyway uh, we we do a crossfade between uh, sending to room one to, to room two. So if we, the, the game object is emitting in room one, it's sending to the reverb in room one. And while it's cross crossing this portal, it's gonna little by little send also to room two until it's 100% sending to room two. Uh, we use uh, cur crossfading curves that, that look like this. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh. That's it for what's, presentation. What's incredible to me, Tali, is that you know this rooms and portals system and the way that it interacts with uh, sound objects, not just in a room, but as they move through rooms and reverb, not just you know one reverb, but uh, potentially multiple reverbs, uh, as well as um, you know sounds, uh, ambient background sounds that are attached to those rooms. It's true, I didn't talk about it in my presentation here, but there is also an ambient uh, sound that we can apply to each room called room tone. Um, and we'll have an example if 
we if you have time today um you can apply a room tone to your room and and it's going to feed to this room's reverb and everything and and really what this whole system of rooms and portals that you just outlined uh covers is the way that the listener transitions between these rooms and portals and the continuity of sound from these locations, right? It's like every game you're building these, uh, these systems for ambient where you have to keep track of where the listener position is. Uh, you have to know uh, I'm in this room now, so I need to play this ambient. Uh, I'm going into a different room. Do I crossfade it? Do I start one and stop the other? Like negotiating that transition between spaces is something that has always been a very manual process in game development. Like, mm. how do we do it, right? And historically, there's a lot of different ways that you can choose to either start and stop ambient loops. Um, but this is really the whole package, right? It's not just ambient loops. It's, it's ambient loops attached to rooms. It's the reverb of a specific room. It's the propagation of the reverb and sounds directionally through portals. Uh, it's really like a, an entire system that encompasses all these different things. Somebody's asking um, if we can do it on mobile phones, and I think yes. Uh, I don't have an example of a game that uses rooms and portals on phones, but I'm, I'm sure you could you could do it. I, I know there is some people using Reflect on phones, so rooms and portals are easier to use. <laughs> so great question. Thanks, uh, Scope Audio, for that. Yeah. Cool. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's it for me. Um, uh, we let's go back to uh, ah to the web adventure game. So there was a question: How costly are portals on CPU or memory? Yeah, I don't have an exact number for that. Um, but it's, it's a bread and maybe. bread and butter system. Right. These are. It depends like how many rooms you have, um, and and maybe we could like check it out while we're we're doing it, adding it in the Wise Adventure game. Sure. Uh, it uses. You can see it in a profiler uh, of the of, Let, of the authoring. Let's bookmark. Actually, we can. Uh, yeah. Actually, when when this is done and we'll have it in the Wise Adventure game, we'll check it afterwards. But but these things are uh, uh, you can just take the Unity product and uh, up upload it to an iPhone or something you like that. And that also means for everything else we do here, like spatial audio, for example, uh, you can also use that in uh, on your phone. Uh, there is a video on our YouTube page about how to get it to iOS. It can be a bit confusing sometimes, but but uh, once you get a hang of it, it's, it's straightforward. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, the question coming in, are room tones, do they crossfade when you're passing through the portal? Um, so the crossfeeding I was talking about is really the sense when sending to the reverb. So room tones, they live in the room, so they, they won't start sending to the other room, uh, but you will get, um, just like, uh, you will get some obstruct, uh, obstruction. Well, you'll get positioning, you'll get spread, um, and you'll get some uh, attenuation, the distance with the portal. So, yeah. I think it's it's okay, but <laughs> you should check. Uh, but no, no, no crossfade thing. But there still is going to be the room coupling effect that I showed where the sound coming from the portal is going to feed to... Uh, the listener's room, which is another room, so you'll hear it. But I don't think there's going to be a cross rate. Cool. Uh, and, and I think yeah. like with all of these things that, that we're talking about today, all the things you'll be hearing, uh, all the things we'll be putting our hands on, you know, these are things that you can go grab 
the WISE Adventure game, grab the WISE project associated with it, and just start doing it. Uh, yeah, really, you can do it at the same time as us. Yep, really having right your now. hands and your ears on it, going through the motions, and having these experiences for yourself will really speak louder than, um, than the words that we have today. So I encourage everyone to, whether it's now or later or in the future, grab these resources. Uh, put your ears on them, put your hands on them, because it's really through that experience that, that I think you would answer these questions for yourself and come away with the experience of being able to say then, yeah, this is how I'm going to solve this problem in a game uh, when it comes up. Or this is a technique that, that I can help someone else um, discover uh, when they're trying to fix it. And actually, in the same line, line of order, the, the even though it seems like a, a big process you need to do for putting spatial audio, for example, into an entire game, uh, we will actually show you now how to, to put that in for the dungeon in the Wise Adventure game, and just that part. And that will work easily with the AK environments in the rest of the game. So if you design on, like, you want to try some something out of spatial audio, you can just pick a room and do it for that room. You don't have to do it for all of it to make it work. You just try it out with one room and get wiser on that. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Uh, about the uh, next question, I think we'll, we'll see it more when we when we profile. We'll see the, the paths the sound takes, and you'll understand how uh, it's spatialized. So let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, open, open, open this this thing you have here. Open yeah. it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a uh, just a, a quick note here. Um, the only thing I've done for now is uh, uh, download the Wise Adventure game, and I've generated sound banks just so we have, won't have to wait for that. Um, so, but but this is how it will look when you download it. Uh, that's it. Uh, let's see if we can actually go into modify here. Yeah, so when you gotta download it, it will just suggest that you gotta get the Wise uh, project and the Wise Adventure game. But you also need the Unity Source project in order to to get the Unity project itself. Um, but yeah, and buy it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what we'll be doing is open the Unity project here, and we'll also open the Wise project, but not in the newest version, but in the two o y zero, because that's the one uh, supported. Uh, as you see here in the left side. Whoops. So you can see here that's the one we support here. But you can open it with the newer one, but we choose to do the one we tested the most with. Whoops. Yeah, now I opened it twice. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So once you uh, start the project, you'll probably see something like, uh, let's just make a new scene here. Don't save it. You'll probably look like this. But for that convenience, we'd create a menu in the top. You can go to Audio Kinetic, Game Scenes, and Main. And then you get the main scene. Um, so let's start shaping what we are supposed to do. Uh, we're not going to change any of the things on top of the world here. We're going to change the dungeon. So we'll start by searching for dungeon in the uh, project here. Find the dungeon scene and take that in. So now we also have loaded the dungeon. But since I have now loaded the dungeon, I also want to take off the automatic loading because when you move around in the world, thing the scenes will load automatically. So for that, I will just go into Wise here, Bank Regions, and just take. Like, actually, let's just take off the dungeon because that's the one we're going to use. And in the dungeon scene, you can see that if you are not familiar with it, uh, there's a variety of different rooms here. Oops. Uh, and there's also in the back here a DLC room. That room we're also going to just load in. So we have that for later. So I'll just, that is loaded through a DLC region here. I'll just go through that quickly. And Le one of the last things is that the dungeon audio environment is a separate scene for all the audio things that we load. So that we also need to have in, uh, because that is no longer loaded from the bank region of here. So when we once we press, press play now, 
uh, all of this is loaded instantly. Uh, but that is like the reason we we chopped it up in these bits is that you don't have too many graphics loaded at the same time, too many audio uh, files and so on, and built on that process. And so but now we're gonna like, stop play, stop play so many times. We don't want to each time yeah. remove the scene, reput the scene, remove the scene. So this mm. is just for adding spatial audio. But then we'll we'll put it back how it was before, right? Well, it's yeah, a development exactly. workflow, right? Uh, yeah. We're iterating yeah, yeah. on a specific area of this map. We don't want to be bothered with all the other stuff. Uh, so again, showing that process yeah. of being able to clear your workspace, have your focus up front, uh, super helpful. Yeah, so uh, from now, um, just want to show you again this, these orcs environments here in the world. We have in the main scene, we have all these orcs environments for the top of the world. But in the dungeon as well, there's the white we call environments. Them ox environments because they're yeah. auxiliary. Ex like, yeah, auxiliary bosses. Got it, got it. Yeah. Uh, and down here we have the wise environments. I, I'm not sure why I called it wise environments and ox environments up here, but uh, but yeah, that's how it they're is. smarter, right? <laughs> Older and wiser. And wiser. <laughs> yeah. That's because we knew we were going to put in the spatial audio, right? <laughs> um, so make it a bit different. And uh, down here, you see that we have these, for example, the dungeon entrance and the mezzanine room, which is pretty basic rooms. Uh, a, a box co collider, in this case, is mesh collect collider, actually. But it could, in this case, just be a box collider uh, like this. And, and so so the room itself is pretty squarish. And that, that, that room is going to be uh, replaced by the AK rooms. So uh, should we just put on an AK room? Add a room instead of the AK environment. Yeah. So let's close some of these things down just to make it more simple. Uh, here we have the AK environment. And if you just go into the search here and search for AK room, is that you'll find the AK room. There's also a portal. We'll look into that in a second. But at least the AK room, we'll put it there. And notice that it has, in relation to the AK environment, we have the name here, which is actually also an aux bus, the same as the reverb aux bus here. So let's actually let's head into Wise just quickly, and go into the uh, world, the master hierarchy here, master mixer hierarchy, aux buses and dungeon, and you'll see here the mezzanine room here, and yeah. mezzanine entrance, which is the aux buses we're gonna use. Yeah, the aux buses that we want to use with rooms have to be a little bit different. Yeah. We can do it right now, or we could do it, yeah, let's do it right now. Yeah, sure. Um, we created a, a preset that you can just load, and it's going to change all the parameters for you. So you yeah. can. Let's put this up side by side so you can watch everything at, you can watch everything at once. Yeah, and hands yeah. up in the chat room if you've used the presets uh, feature in Wise. <laughs> Sometimes people are like, what? Presets? Yeah. In -wise. Yes, yes. OK, so uh, the presets itself is a small button up here, load preset. And once you get there, you will see there's a room auxiliary bus. And for this 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 case, I'm putting out on the mission and room entrance, load. And what you notice is that I can I can go back as well just to Get a sense. They use game to find auxiliary sense, and if you go into position, this will change slightly. So the aux bus adds, uh, uh, adapts to the being a used as a. It needs to be positioned. Um, yeah. Because it's spatial audio. <laughs> and it's very convenient. Instead of remembering, oh, I need to enable diffraction. I need to enable. Uh, listener the relative routing and so on. Right. So using presets is a good idea to start with. And that preset is going to be uh, just in your uh, any new project or any old project that you use uh, you open with 19.2. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, this one, and you want to have the room too. Yeah, the mezzanine room. Yeah. Let's do the mezzanine room as well, just so we have that. So go into the mezzanine aux bus uh, and add it to being a cave room as well. Yeah. So how is it again, uh, Tali? Do we need to generate some banks? Or... No, no. If you just connect uh, yeah. wise, you don't need to generate some banks at all. Perfect. Um, 
And so let's go back to Unity and get rid of this AK environment. So we just open the picker for the uh, reverb box bus here. And we go into, again here, dungeon and find the mezzanine room. That's the one we have right now. And then we can delete this one, AK environment. So that's gone now. Now it's an AK room. And go back to the dungeon entrance here, which is actually the mezzanine entrance, mezzanine room entrance. And we can do the same thing here. So uh, the AK environment, we'll add an AK room here, add a, the dungeon, a mezzanine room entrance, OK? And then remove the AK environment. Oh, yeah, there was also another thing we need to do before. We need to add the spatial audio listener because now we have yeah. spatial audio in our in our in our game in general. So we just need to have this component of the listener. Yeah. So in the Wise Adventure game, we the listener is on the camera, not to confuse with the player. So uh, if you go into the main scene and go to main camera, uh, you will have to close a lot of scripts here. <laughs> but you can see that one of the scripts that I, yeah, because there's a lot of effects on, one of the scripts was called the AK Audio Listener here. Yeah. And if you just take the audio, oh, just try the listener, you'll see there's the AK Spatial Audio Listener and the AK Audio Listener. So let's add the spatial one. Yeah. And this is, it, you don't need to remove the other one, it, it goes with yeah. the audio listener. I think that one, can you and even, then, no, you can't even remove it, yeah, depends on no, it. Can't because it depends on it. Yeah. And I think last thing is um, all of the emitters that are in the room, in our new rooms, need to be aware of them. So before you would go and you would add uh, environment aware at your for your AK game ops, for example, if you click on one of the, um, emitters, so like the fire, for example, on AK game Obj, um, you can leave it there, but yeah, if you go in the AK game Obj, um component, yeah. you yeah. had like an environment aware they had to tick so that it's aware of the environment, AK environment we had, but now it's, we're not used, well, you could leave it or, or there's no AK environment anymore. But now that we're using rooms, we need to add a component for room aware. Um, it's a different component, but it's the same. Um, it's kind of the same thing. It's just it's it's sending what I said at the beginning of my beginning of my presentation, where I said that you need to tell spatial audio that you're in or out of the room. Yeah. I guess we need to add it to the player if the player emits things too. Yeah. Uh, the thing is with the player that the. <laughs> The player emits a lot of sounds different places. We can do that, but um, uh, whoops. So we can add one here, AK room aware. But there's also, for example, uh, if we have feet for the footstep, I think they right. are added here. So AK room aware as well. So okay. actually just take a look. Oh, here. but then AK room aware depends on AK game option, and it just added an AK game option. Sure, is it all right? OK. Yeah, I think it's OK. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also, the uh, if we go into um, the weapon slot here, weapon holder, I can never remember if it's actually this one or this one that is playing the sounds. But we if it has a game object on it, it's a game object. So I guess it's it's the one. Let's see here. This is just battle level effects. Yeah. So the weapon holder is also the impacts of the sword that we also need. Uh, I think okay, that's it. We can start. Yeah, that's true. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, there's <laughs> one last thing. One last, last thing is that all the sounds, after that, it's finished. All the sounds that are emitting in those rooms, uh, if we want to have obstruction and occlusion going on, we need to enable diffraction. Yeah, that's true. So let's so uh, <laughs> find the campfire. Campfire. Yeah. <laughs> I have a list. It's four things. Spatial audio Particular spawner. A K room object aware. A K room aware object. I mean, change your reverb aux buses to load the preset and then enable diffraction on your sounds. Four things. Bam. Yeah. 
<laughs> and and f in this case, I'll just crank up the volume a bit for the fire here, so we can hear it very. Yeah, audibly. let's choose the fire for our our yeah. test and see if it works. And the enable diffraction is inside the positioning tab in the button. Oh, exciting! <laughs> My head is already burning. <laughs> And I'm connecting the uh, wires to the uh, Unity project. You can do that before starting the game. And I have the game view, uh, the window of the game view here, where you see the rendered game itself. In there, I'll take escape and then go to teleport to the dungeon, because the dungeon is actually the mezzanine room. Oops. Whoops, I was stuck in something there. Ah. I know why. My fault. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I I added a bus collider to uh, the instead of the mesh collider on this. Oh, you added the bus collider, box collider. But I forgot to, to take trigger. off the is trigger. Yeah. Okay. There's gonna be a lot of those things in this stream, so uh, we can handle it's it. It's common errors. Common errors that always happen. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the dungeon. Oops. When we go here, I will reconnect to the game. And let's go to somewhere that is more interesting to look at in wise. What about the game object profiler? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to suggest and that we take that music out. It might not right. be relevant to our uh, to our work today. Let's do that. It's trigger my old nemesis, somebody says. <laughs> Okay, so for the music itself, uh, because we'll just take it out for the rest of the stream here, you go into the managers, and we have some different managers settings, but the music event property here is the music starting, and also the enemy music, which is multiple layers on top of each other. So we've just set that to reset. You won't have any music when you start the game. Great. Uh, to answer a question in the chat, yep. uh, the room aware objects need the triggered collider. No, the triggered collider was on the AK room because we're going to go through rooms, uh, walk through them. So that's why you needed the triggered collider, but not the emitter. Yeah. So Great in question. this case, just, in this case, just to, um, to get your some speed to with the checkpoints, they only turn up, like turn on when you get close to them. So if you go close here, you can hear the, how the. Uh, we can we can hear you know. the um, torches. I don't know if you want to disable those, mute them, because it's the same sound. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. It's it's fine actually. The uh, in here. Yeah, and just fire, and then just something. solo that one. Solo it, yeah. So it's for solo. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there is something missing, I think, in your profiler. Is you need to uh, add spatial audio um, yeah. profiling data. And that's in the wrench down oh, here. Oh, I, I apparently did it already. Maybe it's safe. The oh, because we're in the same room as our emitter, so there's no path. Um, we should go inside the. Oh, well, we don't even have a portal, so we're not going to see any paths right now. Yeah. But if we go inside the other room, it's going to be occluded. Yeah. So they, remember, the uh, listener is on the camera, so... And it's gone. <laughs> so our occlusion is 100% right now. Let's go to the voice profiler to see what's going on. And is this coming through out there in TV land? Like, everything, uh, you're hearing it, you're seeing it, it's working for you all? Just like to check in. Uh, and, so uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Excellent. Yes, okay. Thank you for that. Sure. Just a little sanity, sure. just a little sanity. Thank you. Can you open up uh, ambience emitters, medium, something, something on uh, the right? Yeah, but I'll just begin off with. Oh. Uh, set this as the uh, text filter, so we only see that one. Okay. Not to be confused with the others, and then we go into the ambient meter here, medium, and look here. So we have a hundred percent occlusion. Let's check out our curves for a uh, for to see why it's like completely off. Let's see, it's in project. Uh, in what? A project. 
uh, at, take um, uh, oh, um, on the top, yeah, at the <laughs> left of edit. <laughs> Um, on the top there. Um, just uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> and then oh. it's um, uh, project settings. Yeah. Occlusion obstruction. Yeah. Uh, so occlusion. Uh, there's three occlusion curves. There's an occlusion volume, uh, occlusion LPF HPF. So as we see the volume one, occlusion one. Uh, that's obstruction. Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. It goes to minus 200 when you're we're at 100 obstruction. That's why we don't hear anything. If we change it, uh, then we'll hear it. But then you need to. Can we do that on a fly? Thing. Let's, let's try it. Yeah, maybe. I can hear it a little bit. Yeah. You can hear it some, somewhat. Uh, uh, we're not, we're not uh, connected anymore. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's why. Great. Uh, back to the voice profiler. Let's see here. Okay, so the volume is actually higher than before. It's not yeah. minus uh, 96. 96. So uh, we changed the curve, but like, anyway, yeah. your curve is your uh, your work. You do what you want to do with it. So yeah, 100% occlusion because it's going through uh, the room walls. And our wall were like default 100%. Well, uh, the wall occlusion value was one, I guess. Let's just try again. If we you check it right now, but I guess it does it. Can you hear anything? Because I can't. No, but you're I, muted. I think yeah. completed the uh, included. Yep. Yeah, it's completely. But maybe it's something you uh, need to just build a sound bank for. Let's try that. Oh yeah, maybe it's because um, changing the project curves is different. Yeah. I think it's the only thing that you need to rebuild the, the yeah. sound banks. When in doubt, rebuild the sound banks. <laughs> <laughs> but all the rest should be all right. Yeah. yeah. And I'll start the game again and jump to the dungeon. Here and start the sound itself. Mm -hmm. Then go through. Still no sound. Let's just um, look here in, it does look like it should be way louder. So why are we not hearing it? Wait, 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 wait. We have LPF and HPF that are hundred percent. Maybe that's it. That's also it. So mm. key point here, you're, you're looking in the voice profiler to find this information. And the voice profiler is a place where you can see uh, a sound and the influences of that sound as it's routed to the the master bus. Uh, really valuable yeah. tool for debugging. I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah, definitely. This. Yeah, maybe it's because of the low fast filter that is under hundred percent too. Mm. Do, you, do you want to change it or let's forget yeah, about yeah, it? Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, <laughs> let's do that, and let's try to do it on the fly. Uh, or, so or we can also change our wall occlusion to not be 100. Uh, First, if this works. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I I... Out. You're not connected because you changed the curve. Oh, yeah. Every time I. I know. That's what we heard before was uh, the torches. That way. That's what. Yeah. But you so. didn't change the value at 100%. You only changed the value at zero. That's why. Uh, yeah, I did it in the wrong order. This is something we didn't try before going live. <laughs> so something like this, right? Let's try this. Very low. And then reclick. You can and hear it. it. So now you can hear it. So we don't need to generate banks. I told you, you don't yeah, need yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> um, question coming in from I, the chat. Uh, can you? Show us again how to enable the spatial info in the profiler. Yeah. So if you go to the, uh, the let's take the game optic profiler here, and you go to the sync monitor, for example, there's a small view settings here in the right side, and here you can profiler settings. Yeah, and here you can enable spatial audio. I also enabled something like a obstruction data. And voice and... inspector, if you want to use yeah. the voice inspector. Or else it will look something like this. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So toggle that on and you should have all the spatial info you can handle. Yeah. So, okay, if we so have... before we do anything else, let's go back to that and put those values back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's so... change uh, the wall occlusion parameter instead, or or we can go and add a portal. Yeah, let's let's go uh, portal first. But uh, but yeah. Um... We can do two at the, at the same time. Yeah. Um, so for the uh, let's just find the rooms again, the mezzanine room and the dungeon entrance. So to add a portal, that's when you what that's what you want to do first, right, Tali? Add we a portal, do, or do you want to do a? We can do both at the same time. We can okay. select the rooms, the AK rooms, and um, change the wall occlusion to have to, to have a different occlusion value, and also yeah. add a portal. Yeah, cool. Let's do that. So to just create an object close to where we are in the scene, I'll just right click on the wise environment or the dungeon entrance here, make a new object, an empty one, and it's it's right here. So uh, from there, I will go to the add components, add an AK room portal, and you can see that it's pretty large now, but then I can shape it to fit the door itself. Great. Now I'm just going to uh, note we're at the one hour mark. And so wow. Wow. taking that moment to recognize time flying when you're having fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to take this opportunity. I mean, we took our time in the beginning, but then it's going to be repetitive. So we'll do it faster, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in this case, I'm, I'll take the uh, element out, the game object out again, and I'll just call it portal. And in this case, I, I need to check for the uh, ends of this portal because it's very important that these reach into the two regions. You can al already see here that from the AK uh, environment, it was too much into the other zone here. So just slightly into the portal here, one side. And on the other side, just slightly into the other one here. But keep but it in line with case, the, the wall. Yeah. As we talked about, Tali, uh, in this case, we should try not to take it out of the wall because then you, there's an area where you potentially could be outside an AK room if you, for example, take the camera to the wall. The portal needs uh, to bridge the two rooms, essentially. Yeah. And then we can see that it does because there are the back room and front room information in the component. So yeah. we can see there's dungeon entrance and mezzanine room there. Right here. Uh, right. Telling you that it's well positioned. Yeah. And then, because it is by standard it is closed, let's open it up because there's no door in this entrance. Yeah, and then if we want to change the occlusion value at the same time, we have to open the AK room component. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, true. Uh, the dungeon entrance here or the uh, missing. Uh, well, uh, it's going to take the maximum of both. So if we keep one at hundred, then yeah, it's hundred again. So let's take this at. 2.6 maybe. Yeah. And the other one at the same value. Let's okay. try it out. I'm waiting for Unity to start. Does anyone and else have a dance that they do when they're waiting for like progress <laughs> bars or like, you know, things? It was fast enough. Was it, it could be a fast uh, dance. I don't know. <laughs> so as you see, it's not pretty. Already playing. Now it's playing, and actually, I don't know if I can do that on fly, but uh, I wanted to add the debug component so you can see it. But one thing I right. want to know here, we'll do, it. we'll do it after. One thing I want to know real we'll... quick is that when you go in and out of the menu, you're doing some automated uh, filtering. So in and out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I just want to call um, that out actually, for folks who maybe have not worked. Yeah in the wise adventure game before is that you're applying some automated filtering whenever you pause and unpause or go into the menu and out yeah. of the menu. So that is not the room and portal system working. That is automation That's true. on the filter. You it? It's actually right here, the, I think so, the low pass filter here, the RTPC that is yeah. uh, here. So right. let's actually in game menu, let's just take it out for now. Uh, can, well, let's just bypass it, actually. Oh. Yeah. Oh. No, let's uh, take it off. Great. Okay. 
And it's very quick to generate some banks now that we've done it once. I don't think you'd need to do it. Just connect. To <laughs> yeah. I tell you, there's little rituals that a person does, like just to make sure that their sanity stays intact during this process of, of iteration. It's, so it's like control S when you're typing yeah. everywhere, yeah. even if you're typing in like, I don't know. And in another thing I like to use in the Unity product is the uh, AK Spatial Audio Debug Draw, which is essentially a, is a light version of the thing you'll see in WISE. But in here, you can select that draw diffraction paths. So whenever the we go through the portal, you can see a line trace. That's the uh, emitter we put it on. Yeah. And every emitter you want to see paths, you have to add this uh, debug draw component on. Yeah. Definitely. But again, uh, remember that recasting uh, in this way is, is, is sometimes a bit costly. So yeah. uh, so do not just put them there forever. You know, remove them whenever you're not debugging. And uh, anyway, you're going to see it in the wise uh, offering. This is the part so. where it gets actually really cool and sci-fi when we start to profile this propagation. Yeah. Going back to the dungeon. Starting the sound itself. Okay, and what about the wise? What should we do about the wise project here? Should we look at something? Uh, just find the portal. You should see the portal already. Uh, portal yeah. always gets uh, I think drawn. I think I pulled in too much. Uh, let's find the. Mm, it go and on where it's none should. Um, so see here. Oh, oh yeah. it's, it's too way way too far out. Um, oh, maybe oh, actually we need to go in and down there. You saw it? I saw it is down a little bit down. <laughs> what? I saw the portal. Oh, I see it. There's a green line. It's right. Right. There it is. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. There. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. <laughs> so I'll use the right click here to navigate around. Uh, and it rotates a huge load here. Um, this is Mads hacking well, the matrix right now. <laughs> yeah, let's just look from it from this angle. Yeah, that's okay. perfect. <laughs> um, okay, so you can see here that we walk around. There's a line from the emitter to the listener itself, not the player, which is the front of this. You can see a dagger clone there, which is the player. And we go through the portal. Yeah. Based on the theory you just were taught from Tali, the yeah. uh, the fraction line you see. Yeah, there. there's one that is bent here. Yeah, this one that goes from the fire to the listener. That's the obstruction uh, path, the uh, fraction path. So this one is getting obstruction. There's also like the occlusion, the the path that uses occlusion that is just a straight. You can't. You, there's no path, but it's a straight line between the the fire and the listener and this other path you can see like the straight line is um every reverb from the room mm -hmm. coming from the portal there uh, you can see there's a little room or house uh, icon <laughs> to know that uh, that's the room thingy um and we can, I think can, can also it. see like a percentage that's the percentage of uh like it's the angle that gives a percentage of obstruction. Yes, that's the coupling uh, image I showed before. So we are in the entrance. So we're hearing the sound in the mezzanine room, but also feeding to the entrance reverb. So we're hearing both at the same time. Uh, and the direct path is getting obstructed with the uh, 26.2% obstruction here because of the percent the angle. Okay, um, you can see it actually here on the edge here. It's yeah. 26.2%. Exactly. It's also written in the wise thing, but it's super small. Yeah. And also because we changed the wall occlusion parameters, our occlusion is 60. Yeah. Can I, oh, can and I also just... You, uh, just go a little bit uh, back. Uh, do you want to remove things? I just wanted to uh, big set the text bigger. Where is it again? I do that. Axes, 
Texas length? Is that, uh, is that just the uh, text as well? Okay. The text, I don't think you can change though. Yeah. All right. Um, if you just zoom out a little bit. Yes. Oops. This is just, pretty just hard to move in this the... angle. I wonder where. Oh, you hear? You see the green uh, plus icon here? Yeah. This. This is the virtual source. So this is where you're hearing the sound um, from the portal because. And, and so, uh, so this sound that this virtual source is getting obstruction on it, and there's the attenuation. This is a distance attenuation that that is measured at this position. Mm. I'm pointing my, my screen, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to to be the pointer. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. So so we've got two rooms. We've got a portal in between it. We're hearing the the fire pit audio source uh, propagating through that portal. Um, folks in the chat, folks following along, uh, questions, anything, uh, anything that doesn't, um, that's not jiving for you right now. Let us know. Let us know if you have um, comments or, or um, yeah, just. Keep if you want us to change something specific, like if you want us to use another sound or you want to use, you can come with it and we'll try it out. Yeah. I, and I'll say this, like Mads, during the, the process of profiling, you were in the game object 3D viewer, which is that uh, yeah. that uh, 3D object representation of what's happening in Unity from an audio perspective. Uh, yeah. You opened up at some point the voice monitor, uh, or sorry, the, the voice graph the voice inspector, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. opened up the voice inspector and uh, and we were able to chart that um, fire pit sound as it propagated through the different rooms and portals as well as uh, the direct path um, and its contribution and where it was being filtered. Um, and all of this enabled by remote connecting to the game as it's running and moving around in it, seeing that update live in real time. Yeah, exactly. And I'll just put in these view because I think we're going to use it again. Cool. So yeah. people are saying they would like, but somebody's asking for a dialogue sound if you have one ready at we the. Can, I guess uh, we could make we could, one. We could make the fire emit a sound uh, voice. Yeah. So uh, just to, to do that, let's find the. Um, Great. Um, While you're doing that, I'm actually going to take a second to introduce a special guest for this halfway point uh, yeah. in the Wise Up On Air Wise Adventure Game Spatial Audio Integration Hands-On. If you're just joining in, welcome. Uh, we are deep into this hands-on exploration. Uh, we, j we spent the first uh, part of this live stream talking about the spatial audio concepts. Tali gave a great presentation on that. Uh, meanwhile, Mads jumped in and showed us around in the Wise Adventure game, and we just got right down to it. We've implemented two rooms, a portal between them, and we've been tracking a fire pit as it, uh, as it propagates through the portal that we created. And I just want to take this time to introduce a special guest for the second half. Welcome, Benoit Santara. How are you doing? I'm pretty great. Thanks for having me. I feel special. I'm not that special. You're special. <laughs> hey, great to see you. And uh, just so that everyone out there knows, uh, you're leading the inter integrations side of things at Audio Kinetic. I've the lead of the integrations team taking care of both Unreal and Unity. Awesome. Well, we're happy to have you playing along with us at home. Uh, yeah, this is just it. We're along for the ride, uh, answering any questions that come up in the chat. And uh, so there's a question uh, I was reading. Um, Somebody is asking if uh, there's a distinction between obstruction and occlusion in the GameOjek 3D viewer. Well, you can only see obstruction in the game object 3D viewer. So occlusion is just not there, and you can only see the occlusion in the voice inspector. Cool, good question. Thanks. Thanks for that. 
I think I recognize that uh, that handle too. It's good to see you. <laughs> and about the problem with Game Object Ready Viewer and OS X, I'm not sure. Where do you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. It does. It doesn't work right now in the uh, in in on Macs. Um, the uh, at least the rendering of the uh, 3D viewer itself. Because I think uh, you know more about this, Benoit, but I think it relies on DirectX or something that is only available right now on Windows, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Um, yeah. We Can are I... working hard on OS X, though. Yeah. But That's unfortunately, true. this is a major hurdle on the, on the platform. So in that case, you can you can use the AK Spatial to debug draw. As you can see, there was like the same um, paths. Uh, yeah. in your scene directly in Unreal. So for now, that's the workaround. It's great. And we've got oh. Samuel and and in fun. the chat who was uh, Samuel who's like working on that. Yeah. yeah. Presented at the uh, live stream a couple weeks ago. Um, Samuel is, is heading up the cross-platform efforts and has mentioned that, yeah, we're working on it. Actually, a fun note is that uh, the Vice Adventure game was built on Max because uh, uh, Jacob and I, who uh, was the main creator of these all these things, we only had Max at that time or, and, and loved working on Max. So that it also kind of, kind of set the standard for how graphical performance you can make the game, right? Uh, so yeah, <laughs> a funny note uh, that it was made on Max. Um, yeah, so what I did while you were talking, I just went into the designer, made a, took all these blacksmith dialogue. I wonder who is it again who actually spoke that? And um, greetings, adventurer. <laughs> <laughs> and I put it in a random container, set it to continuous loop. As the evil so it just keeps playing. My way. And I put it in event, put it in a sound, in a general sound bank, so it plays all the time. And right now it should work, but. Uh, one thing I forgot is that I go into the positioning here, uh, override the positioning, and enable diffraction. Yep. And this specialization should also, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you may want to add a detonation. Yeah. So we have some. Uh, there's going to be no distance detonation. Uh, yeah. So, like this. I don't know if I require to. No, you don't need to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so let's press. That can that connect a bit wise, though. Yeah. You, you can add the cone, but you, you don't need one. Uh, it's just that when you're, you're using spatial audio and you don't have distance attribution, it's kind of weird. You're going through another room and it's as, as loud as before. Yeah. So now we'll hear, hear Damien twice. That's cool. So yeah, if you didn't understand, Damien was the voice actor for this dialogue. Yeah. Sweet tie-in. Okay. So, uh, what's next, Tali? Um, let's actually well, just walk around just, a bit. Let's just go back the portal just to like make him do this last time the example with the dialogue um yep. and then we'll we'll add portals everywhere and rooms yeah and the question from the chat voices are directional in this case we have a 3d position voice uh, where'd you put the emitter for that? Did you just swap it up for the As fireplace? The yeah, it's, fire. yeah it's, it's on the fireplace. Okay, great. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's we listen to could this. Add a, we could add a cone to make it more realistic, but now just go through the portal. Um, yeah. yeah, we can do... Yeah. Just to... And you can see... The defection here. Okay, well, well it, we can't hear it. You can't hear it? Um, do we hear? Okay. We hear it a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Obstructed. Um, so, yeah. I guess uh, that... Did I, did I say reflections? There's no reflections. No reflections yet. Yeah. We're only talking about rooms and portals. Haven't applied any yet, but we will get to that later. Another, another day. Yeah. And, okay, so let's take the next one. Uh, just because the next door is this D-stone sphere, we'll 
And we actually noticed this last time. It's a bit off here, so I'll just uh, take this uh, collider here, and let's see. It's actually not the collider, but the mesh, uh, nav mesh obstacle here. So let's uh, reset it to something like that. Okay, so in this case, we could have, we could put a portal like before, but there are stones in front of it. So what do we do about that? Yeah, first, don't forget to rotate your portal. Yeah. I use the rotate uh, tool up in the, as when you click E. And pro tip. Yeah. And Makes so wait, much quicker. let me pull this back for a second. So we're putting a portal into this door, but it's got some special considerations because there's a boulder blocking the door. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is gating the content on the other side of the room. And so we want to accommodate for that. Yeah. Yeah. It was and, and the problem is that in, in, in these cases, you could use something like uh, the AK up, uh, up, up, obstruction here, the AK portal obstruction. But the thing is that if you are standing on the other side of this, let's make a just a quick sphere here and put it on the other side here, then an obstruction will actually obstruct it totally with some fade. It will fade over and being obstructed, but it will obstruct it anyway. And that uh, result in itself is not as pleasant as you could get from diffraction on that specific object itself. Cool. So for this example, we I think we'll wait with this until we put in some more reflections on it. So we can put some diffraction on so the line goes from the emitter through over the stone and downwards if the camera is hidden below it, right? So it gradually so this, changes. That's right. So this we'll see it at another time. Yeah. Um, with uh, when we were going to we were going to go talk about uh, spatial geometry. Yeah. But for today, let's forget about it. <laughs> so now we have at least the portal here. Let's see if we can see that the back room. There's the mezzanine room and there's the back room. There's no back room. Why is that? That's because we didn't add a AK room in the library itself. So let's go back to the library here. In this case, just to give you some instructions on the library, uh, the library has multiple AK uh, environments right now. So, but it's, it's so it's structured like it has the library here and it has a statue room for that separately. So you get those, that kind of reverb there. And it also has a DLC room entrance. And let's let's keep all of those, but let's instead make some ports between them and use the portals in, the, in a way larger way here. So I'll start with the library, put an AK room here, uh, find the dungeon library as in the environment, and remove this one. So now it's working for that, but these two others, we also need to do it for those. AK room, there. Uh, and here the DLC area, the DLC entrance itself, and the statue. Yeah, don't forget to remove the key environment. Yeah. Uh, Resize the portal slide. over the boulders. Oh, that's a cool idea. Uh, you could put the portal over the boulders, but the thing is the boulders disappear uh, later in the game. So that's why we put the, the portal um, yeah. over everything. But if in your game it's something else and the boulders are stay there, yeah, you could put the portal on top of them. Yeah. The 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 quest is to destroy the rocks with a giant hammer. Um. So uh, yeah. So that's gonna change. And then we'll take just one of the portals here again, make it much larger, larger. Put it in this region here. And like this. Now, in this case, as you might notice, it's not really a squarish uh, room or uh, door itself. But in this case, we won't really get the camera up in this position. So it won't really matter if if the portal is going into the sides of the wall here. Yeah, they're too, too high. Yeah. 
That's one. And let's see library and DLC rule mentions. Perfect. For good naming conventions, I push should probably put some names on the portals, but uh, let's. So you just copy yeah. and pasted that portal, rotated yeah. it, and bam, it's you got the other door covered. Yeah. Maybe um, made make make them thinner. They're a little bit wide for nothing. Yeah. yeah. Good point. But still, make sure the DLC room and. Yeah, they are Perfect. still working. So and now so all the Ox buses are using rooms, so we need to load the room Ox Oh, yeah, you need to do this. I'm just adjusting <laughs> the AK rooms as well. Adjust the rooms, that's uh, cool. Here. And this one as well. I'll take it out here because we put something extra here later. Um, and align it with that side itself. Let's check the portals again. Yep. All fine. So question from the chat, what does the width of the portal actually yeah. affect? So this is uh, for any game object that will cross the portal, uh, we are going to get a cross fade in the send. So like if you're in room one, you're going to send 100% to the reverb of room run, one. And while crossing the portal, it's going to send a little bit uh, in the reverb of the next room as well until it's completely the next room and then 100% sending in the next room. So that's so like a transition region of... Essentially a distance-based fade in, fade out of, of sense. Of sense, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then so all of these reverbs are now used for rooms, so we need to add the uh, room Oxbus preset oh, yeah. to that. That's true. Let me check my list of things Team. that we don't need to do. <laughs> yeah. Library, here we have it. Library, let's put the preset on that one. Library statue, let's put the preset on that one. Dungeon entrance. We did it already. Is the dungeon entrance, actually. That's probably the entrance to the uh, core. It's the road to the core. Okay. Um, and the TLC entrance here. Uh, boom, accelerate bus. Perfect. And save. Great. Perfect. So, so is it yeah, just... we we could try it out, but for real, it's it's gonna work the same as as the yeah. uh, oh. first. Uh... I'll just make sure to take your check checkpoint here or oh, Damien, the Damien campfire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in here. Awesome. So let's take a leisurely stroll through these areas then without toggle. Uh, Does that sound right? Yeah, we can do that. But uh, eventually, instead of going through the quests and getting the hammer to the, I can just jump directly to the library and we, I can I can walk a bit around in there and you can try. Perfect. Let me start up. Here you are, adventurer. One hearty oh, try to um, solo well it. Uh, after. We could we could hear everything for a moment too. I heard you'll be venturing into the woodlands. Word travels fast in these parts. Um, we you need to. Yeah, I do, I I just want to do it anyway. Just do it, do it. Because the lava is is a bit present. Yeah, we'll go back for to the lava next. NPCs here. I can't wait to implement all of this in my sandbox. Yay! <laughs> That's what we want. Reconnecting. So now you can see that I I went so, into the portal. Yeah. So now we have like a direct line of sight. Uh, so nothing's really happening with spatial audio right now. Um, even if you're in another room, since you have the portal, you're gonna hear it not obstructed and or anything. Yeah. But, but as soon as you like go on the side. Yeah, let's take it over here. Be into the and I'll take the camera here. Fast in these parts. With luck so here we have like a small percentage of obstruction going on, like 6% or something, if we check the scene. So uh, where is the reverb coming from? Uh, we can check the graph for that, yeah. 
Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I'll just clear this up and find the blacksmith now because I changed it. Uh, let's instead let's take the random container so we have all these. In go, I just right click anything in the uh, in the Project Explorer and then go to Profiler and set it as Optic Filler. And you notice when I go back to the game Optic Profiler, that is the focus here. Um, yeah. Oh, I think we forgot one uh, one reverb. What's the path to the forge? The, uh, the path through the forge is actually this area over here. That's probably because oh, I yeah. to close to that orc boss. Because that one is not a AK reverb, so you could see that it was it was inside the listener. It was not in a different game object called yeah the, the name of the room or something. I think it's still there because of the campfire here. It has a trigger. That is large enough to oh, cover that. So you see that maybe you can track. move it a little bit because it's really going in. Yeah. Maybe you can move the bridge. I think I'll I'll take it just out. This. Uh, well, you can move it on a little bit on the right there with the blue arrow. True. Something like this. Yeah. But then again, actually, let's put. We will put it back later. <laughs> okay. And go here. Uh, is the audio for the Wise Adventure game coming through the stream all right? Can folks hear it all right out there in TV land? I uh, just want to make sure that you're hearing all the cool things that are happening as a result of the implementation we're doing for Rooms and Portals. So let us know if uh, if you need us to to make any changes. Okay, so don't 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 go too far oh. yet. Okay, this, okay. When you're in this room, um, just see that like the reverb is the room verb on the dungeon library right now. And then when you go into the uh, statue area, yeah. And now you can see that. Yeah, I just need to re-click it because it's uh, different. Yeah, if you put uh, F6, it would work better. But anyway, so now you can hear what we hear, heard before: positioned, and also send to uh, the reverb we're in right now, which is the dungeon statue. Yeah, that's true. Okay, and uh, yeah, um, a little low. Somebody says for the volume. Yeah, that's because I bumped up the uh, campfire, but didn't do it with this one. And I know I went out of play mode. That was totally unnecessary. Well, uh, it's becoming muffled. This you would is best great be careful. Because that's uh, that's obstruction there. Say it again. And somebody said it was muffled, but that's because of obstruction. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I took out the uh, low pass you get from the menu as well. So it's hard to hear when yeah, we're talking I, over it. I think is is probably a yeah. It's yeah. good to maybe take a moment. We'll all breathe, and you can maybe walk through this, and we can just listen to that and watch it profiling as it changes. How's that? Here you are, adventurer. Uh, yeah. One hearty pick. Go uh, go in well um, mining profiler oil. view. Luck alone saved me. Yeah. And so we can I check the. Of battle, yes. But I'm no warrior. Hmm. Greetings, adventurer. I heard you'll be venturing into the woodlands. Word travels fast in these parts. Luck saved me. I may make implements of battle, but I'm no warrior. Hmm. Greetings, adventurer. I heard you'll be venturing into the woodlands. Word travels fast in these parts. As the evil sent a ball of venom my way, I turned to flee and my sword swung on my belt, deflecting the poison. Luck alone saved me. I may make implements of battle, but I'm no warrior. With luck and precision, you may also be able to deflect them. You would best be careful. Well, we don't have a good example of uh, really obstructing. You need to go to the mezzanine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And he was just trying to take the camera inside of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this. But the fire is not on. Oh, it is now. And you can see here how it bends. All yeah, that's better. Down. That's better. Yeah. Greetings, 
for it. I heard you'll be venturing into the woodland. Yep. Cool. Um, well done. Okay. So now we're going to go to a special Hard case, case, the lava. So if there's anything Here else. Are, adventurer. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll take it. laughs> case. Yeah. <laughs> so if there's anything else um, on this part, ask now because now we're going to do something different. Okay. Yeah. So what's been great about this is, you know, very quickly we stood up rooms across these different areas of the dungeon. Uh, we watched you put portals in. Uh, we set up the presets over in Wise for the aux buses that were already enabled. Um, Thali checked her checklist a few times and uh, <laughs> pretty helpful. And uh, and now we're moving on to a new piece of the puzzle. Yep. Yeah, so, so uh, one thing we could do, I don't know if you want to announce this, uh, Tali, but one thing that is we're using right now is in the uh, lava itself, it's using multi-positions. And how is it with multi-positions, Tali? So yeah, multi-positions don't work really well with spatial audio. Um, so we thought of doing something different uh, for... Uh, to hear the lava coming from down there when you're like walking on the pathways there. So instead of using multi-positions, we thought of using like a room tone. So we'll have a room that would be just the lava part that would have as a room tone, the lava sound and add some portals uh, for where we want to hear the sound coming from. So I'll, like four portals there for each of these openings. This is cool, but before you move on, some people want to look under the hood and look at the attenuation curves real quick. Let's do it. Oh. Yeah. Which so, one? The attenuation which one? curve of the no, the attenuation curve of the the the, the dialogue. Most probably. Yeah. So let's take a look here at the quest giver. Um, I think that's the one because I didn't. Did I apply a different one? Yeah. Did I edit? There it is. And you can also see these. That's the volume attenuation. And there's also a low pass filter, maybe. Yeah. Um, all of them like this. Yeah. And what's the max distance on that? Um, 50. 50. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it depends. Uh, the, this is one of the default uh, attenuations that we use. And we try to use like, like a beach default package of attenuation. So in this uh, ambient. Here, there's some different attenuations from. It's actually funny. It's set to 50 then when it's at 30, but uh, <laughs> these these other ones are kind of uh, uh, used in the cases like how when is something extreme and when is something small and so on. I think at when you um, uh, you move to the mezzanine with your teleportation there, we couldn't hear the. Uh, the dialogue at all, I think, because we were at more than 50, and then you went a little bit near the portal, and then we started hearing it. So yeah. that's that's the distance. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, One more question. Uh, yeah. Could there be phase problems if you have uh, portals that are too close to each other? Take a door and maybe a window and a window kind of situation? Hmm. I don't think oh, so. Save you to the rescue. <laughs> So Xavier <laughs> Buffoni jumping in the chat, he says, you won't because there's no delay in the diffraction paths for now, at least. <laughs> nice. Thanks, okay. Xavier. <laughs> yeah, so uh, in, in my case, in the game here, I'll just uh, take off the multi-positions here yeah. and I'll start using portals. I'll take the portal I already created here. Yeah, first we and need to do a room and a room tone. Oh, yeah. Let's just do that. No and, and if I, as as I remember, the library here is library room covering. is super big. Yeah, it's covering the bottom of it. So what I'll do is just make it smaller, move it up here to the edge of it, so we have its own room below it. 
Mm -hmm. and then I'll make a copy. Move that down. And something like this. Yeah. And in there, in the copy, which is called. In there, we will uh, add a room tone. But we will just remove the reverb itself because we don't want the, the, the reverb itself to be applied twice, right? So mm -hmm. if I'm right, if we had that room tone going through the first reverb and then going out of a portal into our library, it will have a second time the reverb. So in this case, we'll just take off the reverb and we'll add a room tone. And the room tone is the lever that we had before. Ambient lever, okay. Uh, I'll try that again. Ambient lever. And the room tone um, is triggering on start now. You can change it, but for us, start is good because yeah. the lava is always there. It's not yeah. appearing at some point. And the send is supposed to be one. If well, you could you could put something else, but we'll put it to the maximum. That's super. So now it's it's feeding that room tone. Oh, we won't hear it until we have a portal. Uh, so let's take a portal. Yeah, because we there's no occlusion going on transmission with the wet sounds. So like any room tone or reverb. So we, you will just won't hear it if it's if there's no portal. And so the thing is here that um, these portals are squarish. Uh, and these paths down here is not squarish, but from a bit of testing and so on, it it doesn't seem like it's a, that big of a problem because the you won't be able to, in the same sense, position the uh, feed of this uh, room tone up. So if I just place it something like this here, the sound should now feed off through this. Should we try that out before we make all of them? Yeah. Or do you yeah. Wanna? yeah. So pressing play. Oh, I forgot to check it, but it actually found the lava and the library. Nice. And let's also reconnect the, go to the character profile here. You can see the, the lava portal is here. Go to the lava now. And this time we're gonna, because I'm soloing, uh, on something else, we'll find the. Yeah, it's cool. We hear the lava. Yeah, uh, maybe put clear it up and find it here, lava, and set that. Maybe to add a little bit of volume to it. Yeah. We've got lava. <laughs> All right. So once I move around here, now the camera is on top of it. You can see how it's bending there on the edge. And we hear it a little bit less because we're far away. Now it doesn't make sense because there's a, there's another opening here, but we didn't put a portal there yet. And you can notice, notice that from the, uh, because uh, you should, it should be in your left ear now, which is featured now in the uh, streaming series because we got stereo. Got stereo. Um, so let's do it without talking. Oh. That's cool. It burns. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool that it uh, propagates out of that portal again. As you said, the like sizing of those areas is not square, right? But we're just we're just passing through audio, uh, and we get that bending that happens from this essentially kind of a window on the floor. Yeah, it's not exact, but it, it works in this case. It's working great. That's one more, and it's this. And I think what's cool about this concept is that, you know, 
We started out with a very real world situation and that's sound propagating through doorways, right? Between rooms and portals. And if we understand portal to be, you know, the transition between two rooms, right? Uh, and that, that's something that I think we can all acknowledge playing 3D games, right? But now we're taking that concept uh, that's very familiar, based in real world, and now we're applying it to this, this lava, which you wouldn't normally think of these openings in the floor as, let's say, doorways or windows necessarily. But the same concept, the same technique applies for passing the sound through these and getting the benefit of uh, spatial audio because of it. Yep. And so I'm done. Let's check. Does it still? Yeah, they are still in the the correct areas. And yeah. just before you play meds, uh, someone from the chat would just like to see the uh, the extent of the lava room again. Yeah. Whoops. So let's go into the lava here. You can see here how it looks from below as well. And so and the trigger, the, uh, zoom is just uh, is here. So I pretty much just cover cover the. Uh, if you are following along, I just copy the library, and put it below. And, and I could add a different tone. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to the library and notice that all the portals here are now emitting the room tone. So essentially you created multi-positioning using portals. <laughs> and let's, uh, we can also see um, the reverb, right? Now we're hearing the dungeon library reverb, but when we go into other rooms, it gets sent to other reverbs as well. So it's cool. Works with room tones too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it sounds better than ambient points. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, so we have 20 minutes left. Um, well, we don't have 20 minutes left. We we have whatever. <laughs> we have whatever time we left. need uh, to cover what we want to <laughs> cover. Another uh, special case. if. People are still down. You with us? Uh, maybe before moving on, there was um, a general question that now might be a good point to uh, to bring up. Yep. Um, would these practices and tools be usable in a top-down game or isometric view games? Do you think this would work? Mm. Maybe it depends on what you want to do. But you if know, it I'd works say... in three in third person, I think it would work in isometric too. Hmm. I'd say the best way to find out is whip out your sandbox and try it. Try it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think like the the thing is also about the I'm coming from as a, as a also as a unit developer side that that using the wise unit integration is 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 it just a bunch of fundamental things you can use and apply. And so you can change a lot of these things or hack them in a way so that they serve your purpose. Uh, and I'm sure you can find a pretty decent solution for isometric or whatever other game mode. It's just about tweaking these things. Um, and I, yeah, and these I'm thinking rooms and portals and even a 2D side scroller. Like if you had, uh, you know, to manage your ambient transitions, right? This yeah. is also yeah. super yeah. valid application of the technology. And I think that to your point, Mads, it's like, hey, these are the tools that you have. Like, 
what are you what problems are you trying to solve uh do you need a screwdriver a hammer um hacksaw like do what uh you have to do to bring your creative vision across because these are the tools that are available yeah yeah so follow up question on that yeah. on that subject uh more about specifically occlusion and obstruction in an isometric uh, game yeah i think so i think so because you would like maybe i want to have like things going out of windows maybe hearing like i don't know a party inside a house as you're you're walking by i think it would work oh by the way um started again because somebody wanted to see uh what how much cpu we were using awesome oh yeah sure let's do that yeah please uh you know let us know if you get down to some creative implementation and you find that it's working great or not working uh and let us know because i think there's always opportunities to iterate these technologies towards uh the different ways that people are working because Ultimately, we want to be able to help solve these problems. Mm. What's our performance looking like? Um, yes, yeah, start up the fire, uh, Damien fire. <laughs> Maybe I did something at this point that's... Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Woo. Nothing oh. to see here. Yeah. <laughs> it happened. What? Maybe I, I click some. I'll just do it again with the right version here. I think maybe I, I did something at the same time with the loading. Let's try it again. Uh, so while we get set up, uh, I can answer the question of performance with uh, actually, I, I believe the first uh, game that shipped with spatial audio in WISE was actually Call of Duty Mobile. Hmm. Was it so using it's... rooms and portals too? Oh, um, reflect for I sure. Actually, yeah, reflect for sure, which is for our next episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I remember there was a game with reflect. I didn't know it was uh, Call of Duty Mobile, but yeah. Um, so yeah, essentially we're there is a, this spatial. I think we can just see the spatial audio um, performance, right? Can you do that? I think so. Right? I don't think so. No. I don't know what I'm thinking about. It would be nice if you could, but um, yeah. Maybe I was thinking about Reflect because Reflect is a plugin. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. So, yeah, with Reflect, you could go under the, um, where is it again? DSP. It's not here right now, but uh, if you just go up here and add the, um, where is it again? It's the plugins. Uh, let's see. <laughs> we got Nate. Chiming in, it's in plugins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great to have a bunch of folks from Audio Kinetic uh, in the chat room, <laughs> lending their voices, uh, part of the community, uh, and and great to be working as a team with everyone to to bring this to you uh, out there. Eager to understand spatial right, audio. Yeah, spatial audio. Yes. Uh, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it was called CPU now, but uh, yeah, previously it, I think it was called this uh, plugins in early versions, but now it's CPU. So, now. what are our metrics then? Yeah. Can you read those off? Point four. Um, move around. You're in the. You're. Uh, you're. Very static. Stop. Start the 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 Damien fire. <laughs> that's the new name. Start the Damien fire. The evil sent a ball of venom my way. I turned to flee in my sword. Point five maximum. Can't see it going higher than that. Yeah, I couldn't see it go past point five percent. So it's not that bad. Here you are, adventurer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, point five. I can see going on. Oh, I saw point nine at one point. I may make yeah. implements of battle, but I'm no warrior. A chorus of Damien's on fire. Damien <laughs> fire chorus in twenty. Okay. So, are we ready for our last special case? Yeah, I guess so. Cool. Let's try it out. Yeah, and keep the questions so coming. Uh, and if there's something you want us to try, like maybe we need to pull out 
wise grains and start a crazy synthesizer jam. I don't know. You tell and us. You can't have this Damien fire at the beginning. We added it because somebody asked for it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're helping to shape this live stream. It's great to have your input and questions. Um, yeah, let us know. What's next? So, so just for ex like showing off here, we have a door with the DLC room where you can get into. And conveniently, when you get into this, when you want to get access, you just have three coins, which you can get from the crates next to. So let's jump in there, and we can watch it. Um, and for this door, it would be nice to maybe have some uh, obstruction, as, uh, use it as an obstruction, so that when you open the door, any sounds from in there would feed through. Um, and let's go to the library. And for this, Welcome I'll go to quests four, because in that case, battle. I'll get a sword. I'm no warrior. And I'll the smash these the quits to get the coins, buy a key for it, and that's where it is. Now, I disabled the uh, secret room, so now it's not loading at the moment, but uh, we can search for it. Secret. So since the door doesn't open in one go, we can't just like use like the open and close portal uh, uh, yeah. Uh, parameter, because it, it opens like s slowly. We wanted to have like a different thing to do. So we we would leave it open, but we would add a uh, obstruction in front. Yeah. Cool. This is gonna be. So fun. I'll just put a. A portal here, somewhere there maybe. I'll make it just a bit wider here. I'll take this one, the campfire, and put it inside here. Will it be able? Will we be able to activate it? Is it? Oh. Yeah, you can activate it from the wise image you gave me if you just uh, have the game. You just get three coins and you can get a key. Um, and okay, so right now we have this portal. We need to adjust the. Um, your portal is a little bit too far. I'd rather, at this case, I'd rather actually have it a bit in because we're going to use this door here as an obstruction itself. So on this AK room portal, we're going to, whoops, actually for the secret room, I haven't changed the, um, the AK environment. So let's go into the secret room here, wise environment. There's an AK environment. AK room instead. Put that as the dungeon. So again, you're adding a room to this area so that it could be connected to the rest of the system that we've created. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just take it a bit forward here so it meets. It has a bit weird pivot point, I must say. But uh, <laughs> so now it should be in. See which match. Great, and again we can see uh, those two rooms. Yeah. So in this case, I'll take the uh, because the portal needs to connect from two rooms that uh, like the A two AK rooms that are, should be in the same scene. I'll take the environment from here, got KLC room, and put it inside the version and wise environments here. In this case, we now have the front room as the DLC room. Nice. So now that process should work, but to actually make the portal react to some obstruction, obstruction we'll uh, need to add a component called the AK room portal obstruction. And here we can select what kind of thing should obstruct this portal. And I want to do it for... I don't want to do it for a lot of things. I just want to do it for us once, for some specific things. Uh, and I want to make a new layer because it sorts after layers. So I can't call it obstruction here. Click the portal again and make sure it's only the obstructions here. 
So whatever I now tag as put on the layer as obstruction will now obstruct uh, from the signals going from the portal and onto the listener. Um, and let's take the door here. Let's just take some, uh, instead of using the entire door, I want to make a box inside of it that fills the entire thing up here. And I'm going to do it for that one. So just an, destroy something else in the door. And I want to call that spatial audio obstruction. Actually, just audio obstruction. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. So let's try it out. And I'll connect the profiler as well. I guess voice, um, voice inspector would be better to see obstruction values. Yeah, definitely. A uh, quick question from the chat again. Uh, is it possible to have a gradual opening of a portal? Yeah, that's, you can't. So that's why we're doing this. Yeah. Oh, I think you re you forgot to remove a mesh renderer. I yeah, think. I forgot, but that was just to make sure it was there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's go into what it's in, the voice profiler and look at, let's see here, the, um, the touch. Yeah. And what sound are um, we listening for on the other side of the DLC door? Right now we're looking for the campfire, but actually I didn't start the camp campfire. So uh, it said you could start the campfire from, from here, right? I can't do it because I need to go into this area to start oh, the campfire. Make it bigger. But I guess I could just like take it here, Walk alone, make it start, and take it back I in. Okay. Here. Nice. Now you can see that I took it on the other side. It completely obstructs the sound. Let's take it out again here. And the dark plants had already taken root. You can hear it. I want to take it in. Here. Yeah, if you check in the voice profiler. Yeah, let's uh, stop and the let's reconnect because we can't see the names of these things because it just has the IDs like this and the voice of Damien here and let's look at the obstruction. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Because it's behind our door. And oh, leave it there so that we see it change while the door is going to open. Yeah, just do it like this and follow again. Ah, okay. Uh, I'll mark this one. Yeah, you could use the filter toolbar. Yeah. Like this, I guess it's, and go to quest form. Yeah, it, yeah. we can't see it anymore. Oh, that's true. Um, it's because it's Why? Just, uh, okay, so let's maybe it's better to just uh, it's because it's it's a different voice every time. Maybe I should have taken the same voice and put that on loop. Um, uh, yeah, we could. Um, in this case, I'll try to select it in a second. Great. Um, but for now, get a key and let's open the door. Greetings, adventurer. Where is it? I heard let's it. Yeah, let's, it. that's great. Let's do it again, but let's actually, solo the voice. Luck alone save yeah, but I just to look I in the uh, profiler. Great. Here. Uh, yeah, you have this. If I click it again, it started a new one here, and then it's suddenly because mm -hmm. you can see that the uh, there was some obstruction here, and the obstruction passed away and you can see it slowly pa fading to non-obstruction and that's the process of using this uh, obstruction component let's go into it again and just take a look solo at it. It. Yeah, solo the voice when you open the door yeah and you can control this fade time by this parameter and the refresh interval is just uh, how how often it checks with this recasting yeah 
Cool. Let's so that's it. Let's do it again. And, uh, solo the voice and do it again. Yeah, let's do that. So I'll take the. What object was the portal obstruction attached to? It it's attached to the portal. Yeah. And then so if you add, add like, any portal obstruction component, it's gonna add a portal uh, component two because it depends on it. Yeah, and then we put the 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 object onto its own layer called obstruction. Yeah, we decided for portal obstruction to only obstruct layer called obstruction. So it doesn't obstruct everything. Yeah, and uh, I'll just uh, yeah take the coins. Go here. And once I click, it's that has served me well when mining ore. Maybe our um, me. the fade is a bit slow, and our, also the refresh rate is not refresh enough. Rate, yeah, yeah, as well, yeah. I think yeah, your yeah. refresh interval is too yeah. too high. Let's do it again. I want to do it again. <laughs> so let's put it something like zero point one instead. I hear reverb. Yeah, there's a reverb in the coin room. So yeah, but before means... before the door opens, I heard it too. Yeah, that's oh, true. I didn't. I didn't realize. We'll see. We can see with um, the profiler what sound we can hear. Before we smash the crates, oh, let's go in again. This is not a an, a really good debugging method. It's working. So. <laughs> Oh, okay. Can you see? Can you press F six and authoring? Let's just go up here so they can see. And voice crash. Yeah, I hear reverb right now. Yeah, and that is um, maybe it's because of the voice or what is it? Because we didn't add the. Um, because we didn't add the. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the coin room. The ox bus to the new. Uh, the the preset the, of uh, the, room oxbus. The secret room. We, we just added a new room with a new oxbus, and we didn't change the oxbus because it was the old one. Yeah, so Thank we have you, the um, coin room here. Air yeah. net. Thank you. Is there anything else we forgot here? Dungeon call? Yeah. I haven't got to that yet. Uh, let's go back to the game market profiler. Yeah, so if you add a key portal obstruction, it's going to recast and, uh, and and obstruct everything with the layer that we created called obstruction. Yeah. So many details. <laughs> and like everything else, right? It's not the only thing. Uh, try to um, make sure we don't hear any sound now. If you bring the start, the um, start the fire. Yeah, start the air, of course, yeah. Again. Here are yes. So Med started the fire. <laughs> I started Damien. The Damien fire. Okay, we can't hear anything. Okay, that's perfect. Let's see. Uh, nothing. There's something playing here you can see, but it's notable. It's up, uh, obstructed with the AK obstruction. Yeah. A uh, portal obstruction, I mean. Great. Yep, hundred percent obstruction. And we got that and refresh rate cranked up. Yeah, and let's see how it goes now. I heard you'll be venturing into the woodlands. Less it's than voice, so it's it's <laughs> might be some pauses in between, but we got unlucky yeah. with our pause there. But I think I think uh, we get the idea here. Uh, it's a great technique, and and if I understand the two rooms, like uh, actually the DLC room uh, goes to the other side of the wooden door. But I'm no yeah. warrior. Where it intersects with the portal that also connects to the room also uh, into the secret room. Great. I just opened a lot of folders here, and I'll some of them. So you can see here that this is the portal we have, and that is connected to the room entrance. That one. 
and I heard you'll be venturing into the, the DLC room, which is this one. Fast in these parts. Here you are, adventurer. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Woo! Uh, well when so the, the delay, I think, was was still the refresh rate that wasn't enough on our AKA room portal. Should yeah. we should tweak it more? We will leave it to you to finalize it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But but that said, um, if we had some specific emitter in there that we also wanted to obstruct with this door, for example, uh, and not necessarily do it using a portal, there's also the other component that we'll probably look at next time, which is called the uh, obstruction. Yeah. As the evil sent a yeah. ball of venom so this one can be used for specific emitters. We'll, we'll reflect on that. <laughs> nice. Let's show how the next thing we'll show is better than this. <laughs> cool. Uh, perfect. So this feels like uh, our first step on the road to spatial audio in the Wise Adventure game. Uh, it's something we're building here live. Uh, as fall reload mentions you know it's great to see the the process right and the iteration that it takes to to do these things and to achieve the kind of creative vision that we're all trying to to get out of um out of audio in general but specifically spatial audio today um i think it's been a great ride uh what's coming up next time so like right now what we're gonna do is like save our wag and next time we'll open it and just add more things awesome and what else is there to to, uh, to uh, spatial audio is geometry you can send your geometry and directly diffract on it directly reflect on it yeah for example this this, what is it, a tree? This tree there, we didn't get any like obstruction when we were behind the, the structure, but if you send it to uh, spatial audio with, with this, for example. <laughs> um, <laughs> real point. quick, for a spoiler, yeah. Uh, start the game <laughs> and check the game object to the viewer. No, no, oh. no. I just need to. I, I, I guess we'll go more into the. Actually, no, should, leave it. No, leave it. Oh, okay. Leave okay. it and leave it and just start the game. We just need to associate the room, right? That needs to be associated first. No, it's not that. No. It's okay. Just you just want to show some the, eye candy yeah, in the proof. Yeah, just in, go to the project right. and leave you. Oh, uh, just go into the game object view, or you don't need to be there. Actually, yes, because that level is loaded once you no, get it. No, because we moved it at the beginning. You were in there. Okay. We didn't want to uh, like unload and reload it each time. No, it's not there. You need to change your spatial audio options in the profiler. Yeah, but we I did. think we, we did that. But uh, I, still, I still think we need to add the actual room there, right? Try it. The try it. Room. OK, and all of this and more on the next stream we need to put a pin in this we're going to push the pause button until our next episode where we'll be digging more into this exact situation uh geometric reflections uh and much much <laughs> more <laughs> there it is that's your that's teaser. a nice that's a dandelion <laughs> Okay, so thanks for the suggestions here at the end, folks. Um, you know, continue to to put any other comments or suggestions you have for the next episode into the chat. We'll keep track of it and we'll address them when we jump into the next one. Oh, I know what it is. It's just it's just axes axes yeah. that you have to. Yeah. <laughs> you need to peel them down. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> and so with that, I want to thank all of our. Uh, presenters today, thanks so much for joining us um, and really driving this presentation. It's great. Thank you. Thanks, Damien, Thank you. Before we go, yeah, I have a small gift for you in the chat. Uh, I made you a new avatar. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
I'm I'm looking at it. I'm afraid of it. It's beautiful. What? Where? Uh, okay. I posted it in the Twitch chat. Okay, Ooh. great. I'll uh, I'll get that added here ASAP. And uh, <laughs> thanks so much again to everyone. Uh, this has been the first episode of Wise Up on Air, spatial audio, wise adventure game, hands on. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, come back for the next one. We're gonna go even deeper. What even is that crazy thing on the screen right now? We don't even know. We'll talk more about it next time. Thanks so much. Cool. Thank you, everybody, for being there. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye.